various types of heart rhythm abnormalities can predispo- uh, predispose you to having a stroke. So there's a, a certain particular type of rhythm disturbance that's very, very, very common in this country. Like about 8% of the over 75 population have it. It's called atrial fibrillation. Now the atria, the top two chambers of the heart, and their, their job is to just pump the blood down into the bottom chambers called the ventricles. And the ventricles job, as you know, is to push the blood around the body or the lungs. Now the atria should just go top, bottom, rest, top, bottom rest. That's how the heart should contract. Sometimes if you go into atrial fibrillation, the top chamber starts wobbling away like that. It fibrillates. That's what fibrillation is. Now it's fine if it's on the top chamber. That's okay. What what does it do? It bombards the little distributor cap that sits between the top and the bottom chamber with electrical noise. And if you bombard that little distributor cap with electrical noise, the bottom chamber doesn't know what on earth to do. So it starts contracting but really erratically. It's like having a badly tuned radio. It's just that white shh noise. Sometimes it'll cause an activation, sometimes it won't. So your pulse rate may go really, really fast, up to 200, 210 beats a minute. It might go really slowly down to 30 or, you know, 25 or 30. It might swing between the two. They're the really annoying ones to treat because if you give them a tablet to make stop it going too fast, it'll make the slow even worse. Now they keep falling over. So that's atrial fibrillation. But why is it a problem? Well, obviously no one wants a a pulse rate that's irregular, that's swinging around. But the real danger in it is what happens to the blood in this top chamber. There's a wee little windsock called the appendage that comes off the left atrium. And that windsock should close like that every time the heart contracts and it should push all the blood out. But if it's fibrillating, you get blood stasis. That just means that the blood stays still in there. And the bit right down at the apex doesn't move at all. And what does blood do when it stays still? Turns into a clot. And if you get a blood clot down in there, it doesn't matter so much. But if it flies off, which it will do probably, it'll ping off. And then you've got a blood clot in systemic circulation. Why don't you want a blood clot in systemic circulation? Because it whizzes out of the heart and the first place it shoots up is into your head. That causes a stroke. It's one of the leading causes of stroke in this country is undiagnosed atrial fibrillation. Tiny little blood clots forming in the heart, pinging off, going north and getting stuck in the brain. That's a, that's a stroke and it can be devastating. You know, you can have a very, very big stroke as a result of this. So diagnosing atrial fibrillation and taking preventative action, getting someone on the appropriate blood thinner to protect them from the blood clots, to protect them from the stroke is of paramount importance. And every year there's a big drive to try and improve patients' awareness of this sort of thing. So what with that, what are the main, is it the same sort of um, problems that like of a regular heart attack or is it something else that they've got to look out for? Well, as, as I said before, a, a heart attack, problem with the plumbing. So f- from, a, from a symptom point of view? From a symptom point of view, irregular pulse. So, but not everybody will aware of that. You know, not everybody obsesses around feeling their pulse or feeling palpitations. Yeah, and sorry, when you say a regular pulse, are we talking like skipping a beat or are we talking like tachycardia where it's over 100? Uh, or, or well, no. How do you define a regular heartbeat for people? Feel your pulse. If, yeah. if you can feel your pulse, you can feel it in your wrist, you can feel it in your elbow, you what, can just feel like it resting? in your neck. Yeah, just a rest, yeah. If you feel it, if you can tap it out nice and regular and you can tap your foot to it, yeah. that's normal, Okay. If it's jazz, if it's chaotic, that's irregular. They'll just put you on the blood thinner and that's fine. And then you can forget about it, but you're safe and you know you're not going to have a stroke. Yeah.